So do you want to guess where the real money is? We showed the reserve list foils from Urza's Destiny, Urza's Legacy, and those are kind of the obvious ones. Well, there's a lot of foils that are not so obvious because they see absolutely zero play. And we'll take a look at the Phyrexian Negator, which at one time was the strongest black creature you could have. It emphasized black where, yes, you get a 5-5 trample, but every time it is dealt damage, you sacrifice a permanent for every one damage. Therefore, the opponent could lightning bolt this and you would have to sacrifice either all your lands or some combination of this card and your lands. But normally, it was fast enough it could beat your opponent. So, it is a 76 cent foil that, or 76 cent non-foil that no one wants. It's a $75 foil. So the discrepancy between the how cheap the regular copy is and how expensive the foil copy is is strictly due to it being on the reserve list. That's enough. That is enough. Now, moving on to the next card, we have another card from Urza Legacy, which is a $150 foil and a $0.42 cent non-foil. The card is not very good. I mean, yes, when Icely Manipulator was considered one of the best cards in Magic, yeah, this was playable. But the difference here is no one really knows that the Ring, Ring of Gix foil is $150. Just like no one could figure out Negator is $80, $90. It is very likely that the people who currently own this card have no idea that they are looking at $100 bills. And the reason being is no one really would trade for it. Would you ever trade for this ring of gigs for $150 that sees semi-limited EDH play? No, it's not worth it. For $150, you can buy a lot more right, with your money. But hey, this is what it's worth. This is kind of a nice showpiece if you know what it is. And I like it. I mean, I, I like these old school cards. And if you're lucky enough to run into them or own them, then more power to you. Because at the end of the day, these were not cards considered highly in demand. Uh, and in fact, they would probably be cards you would never even put in your binder because who would want them? All right. Next, we go to Ink Moth Nexus, which the foil is $81. So this is a pretty big multiplier. Anytime you see a multiplier of over 400%, it means the card is very interesting from a speculation standpoint. Obviously, it is in the Infect deck. Um, it's also in Affinity. It's another win mechanic for the Affinity deck. So it's in two very strong modern decks that are played by a ton of people. So its playability is high. The foil price is pretty crazy. If I were to predict, I would predict that the card would be reprinted very soon and maybe a core set with Infect. Infect always felt like it's a Phyrexian mechanic, but the first time we saw the Phyrexia, they didn't have Infect. Right? We saw them in Urza Saga and they didn't really have Infect, but it makes perfect sense because they're trying to infect you. The second time we saw them in New Phyrexia, that's when Infect became a mechanic. So guess where we're going back? We're going back to the original planes where they tried to infect. So yeah, maybe the infect mechanic becomes reused. All right, Phyrexian Arena from Apocalypse. Apocalypse took a huge beating in expected value when they reprinted Vindicate. That was pretty much the only two cards, and they reprinted Phyrexian Arena. <laughs> like uh, they. I will talk briefly about the fact they just don't really give a damn about reprints. And that's very concerning if you believe your modern collection has any value. I know Rudy recently purchased a modern collection for pennies on the dollar. And that's what he's that's how you make money is you make other people make mistakes and then you take advantage of those people's mistakes. And one of those mistakes was someone bought modern cards. Modern cards as a speculation, I have been very upfront with you. I'm going to GP Houston. I'm going to sell every single modern staple I do not need in my deck. 
that includes extra places of Tamagoy, if that includes little lilies and snaps and even the Falias. Uh, the Falias is probably the only card I want to keep because A, she keeps going up in price and B, I think it would be nice to have her in my website, which I have not worked on at all. But Phyrexian Arena, beautiful card. And okay, here, if I asked you what you thought this card was worth and foil, would anyone guess it's worth $98? No. No one would guess it's worth $98 because that's insane. It's almost $100 for a crappy, crappy card. That's why, like, when I look at rating Archangel, I'm like, wow, like, she's a, at least a legendary angel, right? And she's, like, not as bad as this card. It is fascinating, some of the cards that in reserve list and foil that what they are worth today. For no other purpose than collectability, good memories of this card. This card was played back in the day, and as was Ring of Gix, and... They were good cards. I mean, that's what we did. We tapped stuff and we played dragons. It's a little more complicated today, but the I, I wish they could go back to tapping cards, playing dragons, having no sleeves, or having penny sleeves. I mean, penny sleeves was like high-end stuff, right? We didn't have the stuff that we had today. And I, did, I don't even remember how we traded because we didn't definitely didn't have trading binders. Uh, we probably just put them in boxed. Oh, we did have we had the we had the baseball collect. Everyone in the same binder, and we also had these starter binders, like you know these starter like school binders. And you would put like the pay. Okay, so we didn't have binder binders like monster and stuff that we have now. We had like pages, and that's how we kept our cards. <laughs> so coalition relic and foil original copy is seventy eight dollars, seventy nine. Let's call it seventy nine. There was a time where literally anything you did, you would be making money. That was before Wizards of the Coast reprinted everything in Oblivion. Now, do I agree with reprints? Yes, I absolutely encourage every single reprint, even cards that I own. So if they reprinted Philia, I wouldn't be that upset. I would say, okay, cool. Uh, she's now affordable, and now I can buy her into her again. But it's really difficult to make any type of money from MTG Finance nowadays unless it's reserveless, unless it's EDH foil. And that's why if you look at the channel, we just talk about that stuff now. We talk about reserveless bulk, reserveless regular cards, and foil in EDH. Because in my opinion, there's no value in standard. There's just none. Uh, I look at these boxes and I say to myself, hmm, there's probably a million of these boxes produced and not a million people want them. And I look at the expected value of the boxes and they're not like great. Um, I wish I loved Unstable because I love the distribution of value, but it's not going to be good. Iconic Masters. The Master Series was only good, as funny as this sounds, because it was limited. Now the fact that we get two of them or three of them a year and they're being produced many, many times, people lost their pants on Internal Masters. Uh, and it's not the stores that lost their pants because stores purchased at 140 a box. No, it's the consumer that lost their pants. And that was last Christmas, I feel like. This Christmas, I think people are going to lose their pants over Iconic Masters and Unstable. I think it's going to happen. Um, people are going to buy it and then they go, they're going to realize, oh crap, there's no value in it. But there is value in these foils. And there will always be more value in the foils. So that's kind of what I want to buy. I'm not interested in buying any new sets. I'm only interested in buying these cards that I played when I was a kid. Because let's say it fails. All right, I'm good. I still have the card that I really enjoyed. So anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.